Hello, Stuart Carroll here from Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll know that we've been renovating this garage and we should by now have a lovely studio space in that corner. Well, that's not been done. It takes a lot longer than expected. So let's go set up a temporary studio space in the other corner and we will be right back to tell you how to get the very best colours from your Mavic 2 Pro. Okay folks, let's do this. We've studied the Mavic 2 Pro's camera in great detail in other videos. Check those out. We've arrived at the conclusion that you want to be shooting in D-Log M in the 10-bit colour profile H.265 codec. It's a little bit hard on your computer, but you can work through that and enjoy some of the benefits. As I say, we've talked about that earlier. It does, however, leave you with a very flat, desaturated image that's a little bit intimidating to colour correct and colour grade. And I'm going to show you now that you don't need to be intimidated. It's incredibly easy. So let's do that now. Sorting out your colours is a two-stage process. First of all, you have to correct the colours. It's a colour correction. Second of all, you have to do the colour grade. Now, the colour grade, that's the fun bit that everyone wants to talk about because that's what makes your film look like a, a Hollywood masterpiece and so on and so forth. And we've got some really cool LUTs that are going to do that for you. But you have to be able to correct the footage first. By colour correction, we're talking about setting an appropriate level of contrast, an appropriate level of saturation. Drone footage less so we're talking about white balance, but nonetheless, if you have a white balance correction that needs to make, you've got to sort out the white balance. There's no possible way I can create a LUT that's going to do that for you. I also don't know what settings you had your Mavic 2 on when you were filming. Maybe you had them on minus three contrast, maybe you had them on plus three. Can't do that. So you've got to invest 30 seconds of your time into getting your colour correction skills down, and then we can get onto the colour grading. So let's do the colour correction first. Let's learn by example here. We've got a nice shot from the Mavic 2 Pro filmed on D-Log M. Just to give you the exact information, we shoot on 0, 0, 0, so 0 contrast, 0 saturation, and 0 sharpness in camera. That's the settings that we think work best for us. So that's what we've got here. That's the raw material that we have to work with. Right, it looks pretty flat, desaturated. The colours aren't very nice, so we've got some work to do. As I say, it's a little bit intimidating, but it's so easy. Bring up your colour board in Final Cut, Premiere Pro, Adobe, however it is, bring up your colour board and at the same time, bring up your histogram. We need the histogram for some kind of objective measure of exposure because we don't really know what the lighting conditions are in here. Your eyesight might be different from my eyesight, etc, etc. Monitor brightness. So we need some objective measures of exposure. So you bring up your histogram on Final Cut Pro, you press Command 7 to do that. Right, exposure tab. We want to stretch out this histogram to 100 on the highlights. Du, 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 du. Right, let's bring that up to about there. See that histogram slide up down here to 100? And let's bring these shadows down to zero. Give or take. And I'm going to lower those mid-tones just to pull a little bit of colour back into the kind of centre of the image. Okay, now we're talking. That is our contrast set. Two seconds, just like that. Okay, you might not want that as your look, but that doesn't matter. We're going to do the grade later. Now we're talking about the correction. We're talking about a starting point for all our clips in any given project that we can then apply our grade to. And this is your starting point for your contrast. Next, we're going to look at saturation. Click on the saturation tab. To my eye, this looks pretty desaturated. So let's turn the saturation up. Already, that looks a bit better. One quick tip I quite like for doing Mavic 2 Pro D-Log footage is it can be quite hard in some shots, they're so flat, it can be hard to see what the colours actually were. This one's okay, but some of them it just looks black and white almost. So turn the saturation up to full to see what colour has actually been retained by the camera. And here you can see we've got some vivid greens, that's the strongest part of the image. The rest of the image is pretty bland actually, I mean it's an overcast day on the west coast of Scotland. Uh, it's a good example because, you know, it's a nice shot, but at the same time, it's not like everything was just handed to us on a plate with this shot. So we're going to have to work a little bit to make it look really good. So in terms of your stylistic decision on the saturation, let's go with that. Contrast saturation set. For drone footage, we're done. Provided you had your camera set to the correct white balance, which is going to be about 5,500 for daylight, 5,500 to 6,000 maybe if you're in the shade. You don't really have much to work with there, but if you have made a mistake with your white balance, then you might want to try and fix it in the colour tab. 
by either removing some blue to warm the image or by adding some blue to cool it down. But we're not going to do that on this one because I think the white balance is fine. It reflects the fact it was an overcast day. Done. Seriously, that's it. It's as easy as that. Now we can get onto the fun stuff with the grading. So let's come back to the clip that we did the color correction on already. Uh, they work in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, all that kind of stuff. Here we're working in Final Cut Pro. So with the clip selected, I'm going to the color section of the effects browser, custom LUT. <coughs> Excuse me, let's drag that onto the clip. Now our LUTs come with instructions on how to import them to your editing software, so you can get into that as and when, but eventually you will end up with a selection of LUTs in your LUT browser here in Final Cut or whatever piece of software it is you are using. And select the first one, Drone Film Guide Aaron, place in Scotland, as are all of these names. Bang, look at that. Colours changed. How good does that look? A really nice kind of natural feel to things. And that is the tone of all of our LUTs. They are light touch looks that you will actually want to use. <laughs> they don't destroy the image with any kind of ridiculous colour grade. Let's go through them for a second. There's Aaron. Let's look at Braemar. There's got a bit of a shadow fade in that one. I want to get you to look at this histogram as I go through because this is a very important point when you're looking at your colour grade. Let me switch the LUT off and on. There's the LUT off. You see the histogram stretch out a little bit. There's the LUT on. It comes in a little bit. I'll go back to Aaron and you see the histogram stretch out a bit. If I switch the LUT off, not much changes. The important thing I'm trying to get you to realise is that none of the contrast and saturation adjustments take place within our LUTs. We make colour adjustments at this point in the process. That is the whole point of grading. Nothing we have done in our LUTs will push your shadow or your white point past zero or a hundred. Doing so will crush your blacks or blow out your whites and break your image. And this is something that we've found over the years with Lightroom presets or with uh, other presets that we've used ourselves. Because we've been down this journey years ago. It's, this is nothing new. People, <laughs> people selling LUTs on the internet or some kind of colour grading preset. More often than not, the temptation to just layer on these big thick effects so that you can tell your customers that they'll give you Hollywood look at the click of a button it just doesn't work. It might work for one clip, but it doesn't work across the board because embedded is this huge contrast adjustment or huge saturation adjustment. And that's just, it's just not effective. It just doesn't work. With the little bit of training there that you've had in color correction, the power is in your hands to take care of that side of the process. You are outsourcing to us by purchasing our LUTs, the grading part of the process. That's the bit where it gets a little bit more technical, where if you want to do it yourself, you have to get into curves adjustments and all kinds of stuff and really kind of understand your colour science to make sure that you can create these without destroying skin tones, for example. So here's the thing, you can create a LUT and it might look great for a landscape shot. Someone walks into the shot, you find out they've given them pur purple skin by mistake. We have designed these so that skin tones are preserved, which is why you can use these not only for aerial footage, but also for ground camera work. You can use these on entire projects. So they really have been very diligently done in that respect. Uh, yeah, you get my point. Anyway, let's look at Glen Cole. Glen Cole LUT, again, look at the histogram. Everything stays within the zero and 100 is a color adjustment. One thing that I would say, and it's another thing I see a lot and I've been through the educational process myself, is thinking that colour grading can make up for inadequacies in your filmmaking skills. It, it really can't. Um, if you don't understand how to compose a shot, if you don't understand the impact that a sun, the sun has on your footage and how you should face your camera to take account of different uh, effects that that may have, uh, y you're not going to be able to fix that with a simple LUT. Don't buy anyone's LUTs on the basis that they're going to make you a better filmmaker. They won't. We're talking about pretty much the last stage in the process, which is the colour correction and the colour grading. Before that, you have to get your fundamentals down. So do check out our 8-hour drone cinematography masterclass, link in the description below, which will take you from drone owner to drone pilot to drone filmmaker 
in an enjoyable and cinematic way. There's also a discount in that link below. So do check that out as well. So we've got a few things for you to get your teeth stuck into. I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be back with lots more colour-based videos. Stay tuned for those. Until next time, happy flying.